The showdown in Washington over Supreme Court nominee Judge Neil Gorsuch is rapidly approaching, and while more than 30 Senate Democrats say they will vote against confirmation, Gorsuch's nomination is now seeing some Democratic support. Joining us now to discuss is WSJ reporter Byron Tao from our Washington bureau. Hi, Byron. Yesterday, Democratic Senators Joe Manchin of West Virginia and Heidi Heitkamp of North Dakota threw their support behind the Gorsuch nomination. Are you hearing of any other Democrats leaning that way? Well, that's a good question. There are a handful of vulnerable Senate Democrats uh, up in states that were won by Donald Trump uh, in 2018. Uh, so these are Democrats sitting in red states who are under intense political pressure uh, from a constituency that backed Donald Trump last time. Uh, so there's a handful of senators like Joe Donnelly in Indiana, as well as the two you just mentioned, uh, and some others like Claire McCaskill, uh, that are all under this political pressure. So these senators remain pretty undecided, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they'll probably make their decision in the next few days. And Manchin did come out and explain his reasoning. He says while he doesn't agree with everything Gorsuch stands for, he doesn't think this should stand in the way of Gorsuch being on the high court. So could this sentiment, the fact that he's coming out and talking about it, open the door for others? Well, traditionally, nominees to the Supreme Court uh, tended to get bipartisan support just out of respect for the institution of uh, the Supreme Court and the importance of such a position, as well as just deference to the president, regardless of party, to nominate someone to that position. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the kind of line we saw from Joe Manchin and from Heidi Heitkamp that uh, these, you know, these are this is a nominee that they don't necessarily agree with on everything, but generally speaking, they see no reason to oppose him, but other Democrats are under a ton of political pressure, especially from progressives and liberals, not to play ball in any way, shape, or form with the Trump administration. So by and large, this is one of the most contested and partisan nominations we've seen in recent memory, and uh, the dozen or so undecided Democrats are under pretty intense political pressure. I mean, not to mention that there is a ton of Democratic resistance, I would imagine, still due to the Republican refusal to consider President Obama's nominee, Judge Judge Merrick Garland. It seems Democrats are certainly still smarting over that. That's right. This seat first came vacant last February when Antonin Scalia, the longtime Supreme Court Justice, died. President Obama was still in office, and by all right, under the Constitution, he had uh, the right to appoint a successor. That successor was Merrick Garland, but Republicans who control the Senate refused to bring him up for a vote, saying that the new president should decide uh, who that nominee is. And uh, that gamble paid off for them when Donald Trump won. So there are a lot of bad feelings in the Senate about the treatment of Judge Garland and Obama's nominee. And uh, Democrats simply aren't in the mood to play ball uh, uh, on this particular nominee. Yeah, absolutely. And there are still more than 30 Democrats in the no column so far when we dig deep into the numbers. So that will either require a lot of arm twisting this weekend or next week, or Republicans will change Senate rules to sideline any filibuster. Is that also on the table? That's definitely on the table. Uh, the Senate is sort of barreling towards a fight over a rules change. Uh, traditionally, filibusters uh, requiring 60 votes haven't tended to be mounted against Supreme Court nominees. Uh, but the atmosphere in the Senate is such that, uh, you know, Republicans are vowing to change the rules to lower the threshold to 50 votes if they can't get 60 votes. And that's something they can do with a simple majority. So uh, the Senate is sort of barreling towards this rules change. And, uh, you know, there doesn't seem to be a lot of incentive to compromise or work out an arrangement on either side. What you're also hearing, though, in your reporting, that make, it's making senators on both sides not happy. You know, Senator McCain has said that he's, quote, very depressed. That's right. I mean, there is a certain amount of institutional respect from many old-time senators on both sides who point to a, a long history of coming to an agreement or working out 
things on a bipartisan basis or avoiding these kind of showdowns. Uh, and generally speaking, sometimes when the Senate has come to the brink on rules changes or judicial fights, they have worked out an agreement. Uh, but a longtime institutionalist like Senator McCain is saying that he's very depressed because there doesn't seem to be the will or a way to work such a deal out this time. I can understand why he's depressed over this. All right, thank you, Byron Tao, for all that.